Hi everyone and welcome to this week's reading vlog. Um, yeah, so I'm excited for the week. It's a little more of a chill week than last week was. <laughs> last week got a little out of hand, but it was very fun as you saw, you know. I'm really sore still. <laughs> like just every part of me hurts from tubing and um, from sunburn and just all the great things that come with summer. Like. You can't really complain when you get to spend time in such a beautiful place. So, a couple things I'm going to go over real quick here. I'll tell you what I'm planning to get through this week. And then I have a quick Beacon Book Box unboxing. 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 Um, so, let's see. So, I'm still halfway into the kingdom. And I'm really liking it. It is just as interesting as everybody said. I feel like I've said that in the last vlog. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm getting to that precipice where there's no turning back. So I'm hopefully going to finish this. Then um, I want to read, I, I need a romance. I haven't read a romance in a little bit. And I realized I was reading lots of fantasy and it was time to throw in a historical romance. So I'm going to take on the next Bridgerton novel. This is To Sir Philip With Love. This is about Eloise. And it takes place during the same, the beginning of it starts the same time as um, Romancing Mr. Bridgerton. Woo! And um, this is one that I don't remember as well. The, the next, like, one, two, three, I don't remember very well. Well, the first four and the last one are the ones I've read the most. So I'm looking forward to this. If you are a historical romance fan, you should know they're making a TV show out of the first book. And they've started, they have cast almost everyone. So if you, um, if you go to Julia Quinn's Instagram, you can see pictures of everyone. It's really fun. They're going really diverse with everything. And yeah, I'm super, I'm... I'm really excited because Netflix has made so many other books into adaptations that I'm willing to let them have a try with my romance novels. Like, even if it's bad, they're cheesy books. They're supposed to be cheesy, and I'm excited. I'm interested to see, like, what they, like, rate that kind of story because the main, like, plot of The Duke and I is kind of intense, so... I'd be interested to see that. But anyway, um, and then I need to make some progress on the blinding knife or else I need to DNF for now because I'm just not interested in Kip and we're spending a lot of time with him and so it's getting really frustrating. And I know this whole story is really good so I just need to get invested into him and I'm just not. And it just is like a defeating cycle reading this book because it's so large and I get overwhelmed and I'm not enjoying it so it's like why am I reading it but I've already bought the whole series so you get that pressure to like not give up but whatever pressure's stupid so let's go ahead and open the beacon book box um otherwise you can go ahead and skip ahead to this time if you want to move along to what else I'm reading <gasps> but I'm so excited about this one because the theme is it is turn back time, and I'm trying not to read the back. But I know there's supposed to be some Outlander things and Harry Potter things. And look at this beautiful card. The Time Turner. Oh, my word. I'm totally keeping this one. Wow, I'm excited. And first off, I knew about these. So these are Targaryen slippers. That's so cute. I feel like they probably won't. Hey, they do fit me. I didn't think they would because I have enormous feet, but there's a little slipper. So these are Tar House Targaryen slippers, which is so cute. What a cute thing to put in a book box. Just these cheap little slippers. Those are next. There is, I put the Sassin Sassinac. Oh my gosh. It's a little lunch box. It's a little bit crooked here. Cute. This must be the Outlander thing. I'm like a little disappointed in that. Like, I'll just be honest. I was hoping for something a little cooler from Outlander. Haha, <laughs> it is a cooler, but it's cute though. 
I've just, I think it's because in the last book box I got a weird bag too. And I just don't know what you do with it. Like this isn't the kind of lunch box I'm actually going to use. And since it's an Outlander thing, I want it to be cooler than that. Next up, Jules Embers, All the Time in the World Soap Bar. I don't know what that's from. Oh, All the Time in the World is the book. It smells really good. Organic shea butter, olive oil, coconut oil. It smells really good. Really natural. Smell. Ooh, Doctor Who socks. Okay, now we're getting a little better. Cute. We got some Doctor Who socks, which is cute. We have slippers and socks. That's really fun. <gasps> oh, okay. What did I just say? That is so cute. It's Jamie. And I was just like, there's not enough Outlander stuff. What an ungrateful little biatch I am. Thank you, Mama Beacon. It is so pretty. <laughs> That's hilarious. Wow. And then the book is The Beckoning Shadow which I almost bought, so I'm really glad I didn't. That's the problem, is like I almost buy things. A power she can't control, a past she can't escape, a fight she can't lose. I had a feeling since it had to do with like time a little bit. Oh wait, I forgot one thing. Me rambling all over the place. This is the final uh, Lunar Chronicles cover, and it is for winter, and it is Jason and Winter. So I'll get this put on my book. This is the final one. It's really pretty. I think winter looks really nice. These covers were the main reason that I signed up for the Beacon Book Box. Because I wanted the cool Lunar Chronicles covers. And I haven't been disappointed. They're really beautiful. So I'm happy. So anyway, enough rambling. I'll check it back in with you soon. Hey guys, it is Wednesday. I'm just a hot mess right now. Couple things. I finished The Kingdom yesterday, uh, which was good. And I was interested in how it all worked out. Turned into a bit of like, um, I don't know. This camera angle sucks. I can't find a good one right now. Stupid lighting. Anyway, sorry. Uh, I just didn't connect, and I said this in my Goodreads review, um, I just didn't connect with Owen and Anna the way that I wanted to. I felt that the whole situation really sucked, and it reminded me a lot of Westworld meets, uh, you know, other, like, AI, um, like, cyborg-created stories like that but there are other AIs and people you know created intelligence that I've cared about more and I just didn't connect with Anna and I don't know what it is it was a very intriguing story I appreciated the things it was making me question but to be honest there are things that other stories have made me question before and I cared more about the characters you know like in Westworld I really care about um Dolores and I really care about um, you know what was happening to her and the way that she was being treated and used a little more and so it boiled down to me that I think because it was kept kind of PG to reach young adults is where that line was for me because we keep we hear these whispers we know what's happening to the other fantasists but none of those things happen to Anna and so I didn't have the real gut punch from the situation that I was wanting to feel. I didn't, so I couldn't connect with her the same way. Like if I had been spending time with Eve or spending time with Nia, who those things were happening to, I feel like this would have been an out of the park story for me. But as it was, I didn't care enough about Anna and I didn't really like Owen too much so you know that's where the line went with me but I did enjoy it I gave it four stars like I said I still think it was well built 
but I was missing that X factor that just made it the greatest read of the year for me that I think it was for a lot of other booktubers and reviewers who've read it. And now I'm just kind of lost for what to read. Um, I'm trying to make some headway on uh, To Sir Philip with Love. That's what I'm pushing into tonight. I'm not connecting with The Blinding Knife. I listened to a little bit more. I really want to get through that one, though. But you know what? I'm really being drawn to Robert Jordan. Like, I want to read the next um, Wheel of Time book because that's just where my heart wants to go. So I'm going to give it a go with this and try to push through. But otherwise, I'm just going to, like, ditch everything because this month is... I've already read the only book I, like, needed to read this month. The other one is kind of The Blinding Knife because it's a buddy read with Murphy, but I know she's kind of taking her time with it too. And so I can read whatever I want because that's how July is going. But anyway, I will go ahead and check in with you again soon. Hey guys, it's the end of the week and oh boy, I had some ups and downs this week. Um, stay tuned for Wednesday's video to learn a little bit more about what's going on with me. Um, it's nothing super horrible, but I have some life changes coming up and they may affect this channel in some certain ways. So definitely stay tuned for Wednesday's video to hear more about that. But let's go ahead and wrap up this week. Um, I feel like kind of a failure reading wise, but you know what? That's a lie. I read what I want to read and I'm not forcing myself to read anything. Remember, that's what July was for. <laughs> and it's been good in that regard. So first up, I know... I think I mentioned this, I finished The Kingdom, um, it's the only book I finished this week and really kind of the only thing I read, as you'll see I haven't read much else which is why there aren't any other clips in here, but I ended up giving this four stars because I did really like the premise, I did really enjoy how the story was told, but I was missing a connection with the characters and character is king for me, that is my favorite part about books usually. Um, and so it was just lacking for me, which is why I had to demote this a little bit. But it is a really great story. It definitely is Disneyland, Westworld, crossed with other things like that. And it was cool to read another book about um, AI because I just made a video about my favorite AIs and it was cool to see some other ones. Next, I did make, I actually need to upgrade where I'm at here because I read some more. See where we're at here. I think I'm on chapter 11. So I'm making progress with the cold dish. I really just need to sit down and finish this one. I've been listening to the audio a little bit because like I said, it's pretty relaxing, but I just need to dig in and finish it because I want to know who did the murder already. As I had said before, like it, it lollygags a little too much for me. Next, I've made pitiful progress on the blinding knife and I'm pretty close to DNFing it because I was buddy reading this with Murphy um, and she actually said that you know if I want to wait for her to send me a cop the copy because she is annotating this for me that's one of her patreon options with her um, that I could like read it and read her notes as I read it which sounds really fun and I'm just not feeling it and it bums me out because I loved the first one and it was such an adventure and right now we're this far in and she said she's 250 pages in and it's still what's happening right now and I just don't care I just don't care right now um, and also a lot of the critiques I've heard other people say that it was really sexist and kind of like sexualized people too much I didn't notice a ton of that in the first one I mean I definitely saw it but it was a lot of like funny things in this one, it's getting a little bit much for me. Like, the word nipple is said way too often. And the main character, one of the characters that I love so much, he's the main offender in this case. Not the only person, but he's the main offender who just is always talking about nipples. And so, I'm kind of sick of it. So, kind of disappointing for there. However, um, Saturday, I did start um, To Sir Philip with Love by Julia Quinn. Um, I didn't get far into this. This is what I plan to read tonight because I really just want to mindlessly enjoy some romance. And um, this is the fifth book in um, 
the Bridgerton series, which is so cool. That's being made into a TV show on Netflix. And they just casted most of the people. Casted. Just cast most of the people. And so I'm really excited. So I'm really enjoying this. This is probably what I'll finish next. Um, but yeah, so reading plans for the next week is I want to finish the cold dish. Decide if I'm DNFing the blinding knife. And then, like, I'm really craving some Robert Jordan. So I think I might start The Shadow Rising. Otherwise, I'll read one of the other um, mass market paperbacks, like, that I pulled. Um, maybe try Dark Fever or um, Lover Unbound. Maybe. So, yeah. Yeah, it, it was an interesting week, guys. Like I said, I'm sorry I haven't been my, like, total self in these. But, yeah, reading's just kind of taking a backseat to some other stuff that's going on. Also... On Prime Day, they had a special where you could buy some different, like, streaming channels for really cheap. And I bought a CBS Access Pass, so I've been binging Big Brother, like, old Big Brother. So that's another reason I haven't read a lot is I've been watching seasons of Big Brother and that happened. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Thank you if you've made it this far with me. You know, I really appreciate you. And, excuse me, you've all been so encouraging to me. And, you know... That's the best, best part about a booktube channel. Um, and I would assume pretty much any YouTube channel is the great response you get from people. So thank you so much. I put up new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe, subscribe for more content. Have a wonderful day, everyone.